live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It's Tuesday, April 9th. Good morning. Hey, we have some great news. It's raining outside. We had rain here at the station a short time ago. Let's jump right over to Justin. Yeah, the good news too, guys, is so far this rain has behaved itself. We haven't seen a lot of severe weather. It's just been good rain. Now it's going to cause some problems on the roads, as RJ will tell you here in just a second. But let me show you where the rain is at this moment. We're seeing it work through San Antonio. Again, most of it's light to moderate. We are seeing a pocket of heavier rain up on the uh, north side. So let's zoom into that uh, cell there, and that's near Timberwood Park. This is all moving off to the north and east at a pretty quick clip. So the rain will come down. Again, moderate, maybe heavy at times, but then it'll move right along. Uh, and then further south, we've had some rain move through downtown. We're seeing that move through the northeast side, Windcrest up to Selma and Shirts. And then further south, seeing a few showers here and there. I think this batch of rain, though, moves through. We'll get a break in the action, and then we're going to focus in on tonight, where we could see some storms, some of which could be strong. As we look outside for you right now, there is rain coming down at the airport. Wet roads there on 281. Temperatures are holding in the 70s. So this morning, a drizzle, rain, stray storm, that's all possible. But as we head into the afternoon, some clearing skies, it turns warmer. We'll get temperatures into the 80s, and then we watch what happens tonight. More storms, severe weather possible along a front. Let me give you the hour by hour forecast. Drizzle and rain this morning, and then as we head towards uh, midday, skies try to clear a little bit, 87 this afternoon. We'll throw in a few chances for storms this evening, although I think most of that holds off until we get into tonight where rain chances ramp up overnight. We're going to talk much more about that and the extended forecast too coming up, but we've got some issues on the roads. Let's check in with RJ. Yeah, Justin, uh, exactly. That rain moving through causing some major traffic troubles, especially for our drivers out on the northwest side right now. Take a look behind me. This is Loop 1604 at Bandera Road, a little bit past that area, and we have all main lanes here shut down from Loop 1604. Uh, being listed as Loop 1604 Northeast, this is kind of where it goes from north to east right there at Bandera Road. The exit right here that traffic is being forced off is going to be the Hausman Road and the Kyle Seal Parkway area to give you an idea as you for all of our drivers headed out to maybe the UTSA Boulevard or headed closer to um, headed closer to I-10. As we take a look here at the backup, and again, this is a little bit past Bandera Road out there on the northwest side. We have significant backup here in this area. We'll continue to follow the very latest there. This is not the only trouble spot that we're seeing right now. We have pretty big crash here on the northeast side, northbound 35 at Loop 410. Right now, the exit there for Loop 410 off of 35 northbound has been closed off uh, for the moment because of this crash. Citywide map, uh, give you a look exactly what's going on and we see most of our buildup of heavy traffic out here from the northwest to the north side all the way to the northeast side. We had a major crash earlier that is clearing out 281 southbound at Winding Way in Brook Hollow, but there still is a stalled vehicle there, 281 in Hildebrand. So 281 is a bit of a uh, mess right now as well. Uh, we actually have some case had employees that came in, said that it took them over an hour to get from the far north side to the downtown area. Area. Uh, if you go out to the far east side, we also have a crash on I-10 eastbound out there. It's F at FM 725 for all of our folks that are headed out to the Seguin area right now. So this is one more look there, 1604 eastbound Bandera. That is shut down. Let's give you one more shot here. 35 uh, northbound to Loop 410. That exit is closed down as well. We will continue to follow the latest and give you more details as they become available. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. Two teens found inside a stolen car this morning after crashing into a San Antonio police cruiser happened a couple hours ago near Trinity and Woodlawn on the city's west side. An officer was heading back to the station when their cruiser uh, hit the driver's side of a black car that had run a red light. Police determined the car was stolen. Two teens were inside that car and are believed to be around 15 years old, but both claimed not to be the driver. They told police a third person ran off after the crash, but police didn't find anyone else. The officer and the two teens suffered minor injuries, but are expected to be okay. It's not clear what charges those teenagers will face. Well, another bid in the race for San Antonio mayor. This morning, District 8 Councilman Man Manny Pelias officially announced he's running for mayor. He posted this video on social media announcing his campaign. He's been a councilman for nearly eight years, and it was widely speculated that he would make this announcement, but he was waiting until this month to do so. This news comes almost three months after District 9 Councilman John Courage announced he was running for mayor. Some other San Antonio City Council members have expressed interest as well, but have not officially made any moves. The mayoral election will be in May of next year. Here's today's 9 at 9.
A surprising arrest made in a deadly attempted carjacking. San Antonio police say a 13-year-old boy admitted to shooting and killing a 65-year-old man while trying to take his car. This happened in broad daylight Saturday afternoon in the Walmart parking lot at Blanco and Wurzbach Parkway. The young teen is now facing a list of charges including capital murder, unlawful use of a firearm, and unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. If you or a family member has student loan debt, relief might be coming your way. The Biden administration is trying to erase some of what people owe. The new initiative would be for people who have unpaid interest beyond a certain threshold, 20 or more years in repayment, eligibility for loan programs in which they're not enrolled, education from a so-called low financial value program, and certain hardships like medical debt. The new plans are not ready for signups yet. An economic warning from the man in charge of America's biggest bank. The CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon, says certain factors may continue to fuel high inflation and bring interest rates as high as 8%, despite recent figures showing inflation has been cooling. In his annual letter to shareholders, Dimon said there's been too much emphasis on the short term and not enough focus on long-term trends. Surging oil prices are the number one threat to the economy right now. That's what Moody economists believe. U.S. oil prices are approaching $90 a barrel, with global prices nearing $92 a barrel. Those are the highest levels in five months. They fear prices will continue to climb amid concerns of war escalating in the Middle East. Travel trouble for airlines. Most of them want more planes for the summer travel season but can't get them. Boeing has cut production and Airbus says hundreds of jets have to be grounded for engine inspections. Demand for air travel is expected to surpass pre-pandemic levels. Cutbacks by low-income shoppers are hitting several big food companies in the bottom line. Some like Kraft Heinz are stepping up discounts to lure back customers. And Nissan Foods, maker of cup noodles, is offering buy one, get one free deals. Google just launched a Find My Device network that works a lot like the one Apple uses to locate its devices. The Android update will help find your phone even if it's offline. It gives visual clues in the app to let you know when you're moving closer to your lost phone. If you use TikTok, you may have gotten notifications about their new app. The alert tells users their photo posts will soon be shared on the new TikTok notes. Users can choose to not share their photos as well. The app is expected to rival Instagram. Spotify now has personalized AI playlists. Users can create them by typing in a description such as music to read to on a rainy day. The AI will pull up 30 songs that meet criteria. More prompts can tweak the playlist to get them just right. And that's today's Nine at Nine. It is time to get ready for Fiesta. And during the month of April, the San Antonio Food Bank hopes to collect 1,330,000 pounds of food to celebrate the 133 years of the Battle of Flowers Parade. It's a lot of food. It's also in honor of this year's Battle of Flowers Grand Marshal, CEO and president of the San, San Antonio Food Bank we love to have here on GMSA. Eric Cooper, Tiffany Huertas joins us this morning to talk with Eric about this parade with a purpose. Good morning, Tiff. Good morning, Sarah and Mark. Yeah, the San Antonio Food Bank fights hunger year round. And take a look, we've already been getting donations. This food collected will help so many families and children, especially right now during the summer when they're outside of school. And I am thrilled to be here with Eric Cooper, the president and CEO of the Food Bank, and Lucy Bell with the Battle of the Flowers Association. Good morning to both of you. What a beautiful day to talk about this issue. Eric, how are you feeling? I am like overwhelmed. This float is beautiful. I am incredibly humbled to be a part of the tradition of Battle of Flowers. 133 years of doing this incredible gathering in our community. But this year, Lucy's vision to really make it about community and bringing a party with purpose and so the opportunity to collect 1.33 million pounds celebrating that 133 years individuals can donate food online they can donate physical food into these fiesta battle of flower barrels and then we're going to make sure that we have a lot of fun but we're going to feed a lot of people also what are we seeing here in san antonio in regards to food insecurity well you know the the need since the pandemic has been 
at an unprecedented level. Families just not keeping up with the cost of food, the inflation on food, rent has gone up. And so our typical household is a mom with a couple of kids. She's working, she's just not making enough to make ends meet. And so that's what's so cool about this event. I mean, Battle of Flowers has such a tradition, but bringing that tradition of love, this year's theme, Viva Amor in 2024, Food, I think, is the ultimate expression of love. And so, man, I just, it's incredible to be a part of this. So um, incredibly humbled, grateful, excited. Come on, San Antonio, come out on April 26th to the parade. Bring your canned goods or go online beforehand and together we can share this love throughout our city. And there's a big team working on all the floats. Lucy, tell us about all these floats. Can you take us around? Sure. It's our pleasure. Um, we are here with the Grand Marshall float that's going to be what Eric and his family will be riding in. And we are so delighted that he said yes to us this summer to serve as a Grand Marshal. We feel like he represents love in our community. Over here to the left, we have honoring our um, military uh, for Memorial Day. And we are in the public school den. This is a parade within a parade. The theme this year is Viva Amor, and then the parade within a parade is celebrations we love in San Antonio. All creatures, great and small, this represents the blessing of the animals at San Fernando Cathedral, which is a big San Antonio event. And so we have a priest represented in all these families. We have Oktoberfest uh, that we have in October, and we just love the little house with all the flowers and all the uh, steins and so forth. We are coming up on holiday cheer in the park and in Alamo Plaza, and that is representation of the holidays. We have Metal Mania, which is our version of Fiesta. And all of this, when can people watch? So we will be, uh, the parade has a brand new start time. It's 1030 on Friday, April 26th. And we're going to be there. We're going to have all the coverage live and we're going to talk to Lucy and we're going to stick around here. We're going to bring you more of these floats coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you. Thanks, Tiff. All right. Speaking of the Battle of Flowers Parade, don't forget your ticket for the KSAT Fiesta Party. We have tickets for the day and the night parades. You'll have grandstand seating. Be up close to our parade broadcast hosted by Stephanie and myself. And you get a chance to meet some of us as well. Me too. You're going to meet me. I'll be out there too. <laughs> so make sure to get your tickets now before we run out. Just look for the story on KSAT.com. And that in itself is worth the price of admission. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right now it's 10 minutes after 73 degrees. Taking a look outside with live cam. Oh my gosh, we have rain. You can see it on the roads there. You can see it on the camera lens there. We even had some out at the KSAT garden, which makes me so happy. Will we continue to see rain throughout the day? Justin will tell us when we come back. All right, two major incidents on the roads right now, and it could be weather related. This is the one RJ mentioned at the top of the hour. This is 1604 East, just past Bandera Road, and it's now backed up to Shane Field. Everybody's having an exit right there as you approach um, just uh, closer to UTSA, just past Bandera. And then we've got another accident working. This one is at 35 northbound, the exit to Loop 410 westbound. It looks like we've got a couple of hero trucks out there at that one right now. Yeah, what a mess out there with these uh, with these uh, traffic incidents. And it, it probably has to do with the fact that those roads are wet and we've got these showers coming through town. Now, the heaviest of the activity right now is right along 281 where we've got some downpours. This is not severe weather, I'll say that, but uh, you are going to get some brief heavy rain out of it. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit closer and I'm also going to pause the radar so we can kind of really zoom in here and see where the pockets of the heaviest rain are falling right over the airport and right up and down 281. So this is going to cause some slowdowns uh, on a highway that was already seeing slowdowns this morning. Hollywood Park, uh, Hill Country Village, you're getting some of that rain just to the east of 281 there between 281 and Boulevard is where some of the heavier rain is right now, Boulevard Road. And then as we go up further north, uh, just to the east of 281, just south of Johnson High School, getting some good rain there. A few lightning strikes here and there, but most of this is, again, just rain. And we've got a heavier storm up here that is working north along 281 as well, just north of Boulevard. And, uh, well, we just got an update there, so it's moving a little bit closer to Smithson Valley now. It's crossed over 281 there in the Hill Country, and this will uh, move towards Canyon Lake here within the next few minutes. So let's zoom back out, and I'll get you an idea that 
of the uh, kind of the overall situation. We've got some showers and a few storms lining up to our west. We'll watch those. And then the heavier stuff is up here around Marble Falls and moving up towards the Austin area. Once we get some of these showers out of here this morning, I think we're going to see things quiet down a little bit this afternoon. Uh, but rain coming down at the airport right now, 73 south southeasterly winds at about 15, and that's ushering in all that moisture that you see there. Our weather headlines, showers, few storms this morning. Break this afternoon, some clearing. Warm, we'll get temperatures into the 80s. And then tonight, we'll feed off some of that energy that we see this afternoon. We'll get more storms with the possibility of strong to severe storms. Uh, so we want to make everyone aware of that. It's probably going to be while you're sleeping tonight into tomorrow morning. And the main threats, uh, and again, I think the main threat for severe weather is going to be tonight, will be hail and some gusty winds. Uh, hail probably the biggest threat with these storms as they develop. The overall situation here in Texas today, there is a large area that is going to be looking at the possibility for some strong to severe storms. And that stretches from San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, over east to Louisiana. And this orange color, on a scale of one to five, it's about a three. We're just outside of that in San Antonio. We're in the two level, but either way, it's uh, it's going to bear some watching. So let me walk you through the forecast here. Is this low that's out west starts to push east, and we get this front that starts to move through. So by say five o'clock, six, seven, I don't think there's a lot going on here. In fact, the skies are clearing. We could see some storms off to our north and east. But as we head into uh, the overnight hours, midnight. Starting to see some storms develop along this front. This is 1 a.m. Storms become more numerous. And then by 2 o'clock, it shows storms just kind of exploding around the area. And this is where we could get some of that severe weather. And this is a time frame that I want to watch very closely. And then by 3 o'clock, we're starting to see this push east. And then by 6 a.m., it's out of here. So the window is pretty small, uh, but we could get uh, some storms even here in San Antonio. And I say the best threat or the uh, the places that have the biggest threat for weather tonight is going to be I-35 and points east. The other thing we have to mention is the fact that winds will be very gusty tomorrow in the wake of this system. So we'll see some gusts 25 to 35, maybe even a few gusts close to 40 miles per hour by tomorrow afternoon. And then you'll see the dew points come down. We'll be in some drier air, so we'll lose the humidity and uh, we'll have a nice stretch thereafter. So 75 tomorrow and 80s Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, partly cloudy skies. So it really is just tonight. Uh, again, a few showers and wet weather this morning, but tonight that we'll be really closely monitoring. Okay. Yep. So really don't have to worry too much about putting cars in for hail or, I mean, it's good. It's, could it's not a bad idea. Okay. I, I don't think that, uh, you know, it's going to be terribly widespread hail everywhere, but uh, it, if you can put it in a garage tonight, it's probably not a bad idea. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 919, 73 degrees. A man jumps into action to try to stop a couple of car thieves, and it was all caught on camera. When we come back, what that man says was going through his mind as all this unfolded. Well, we have several trouble spots now, and add a third. This is a big one that's just popped up in the last uh, five to ten minutes. 410 westbound at McCullough. You see a bunch of first responders are just now arriving on scene. We saw an ambulance and there was another vehicle. Uh, we, we saw a fire unit or okay. two fire units, a uh, police officer, and this all just happened because none of those are really popping up on all of our maps, but on our EMS page, it says that they are responding. All right, so. and there's the rest of that ba backup right there. And then we've got the other problems out there on the northwest side. 1604 just past Bandera and 35, the uh, exit ramp uh, to Loop 410. So wet roads just about citywide, be advised. Uh, and there is a much better look. And it looks like oh, a school a bus oh, no. is uh, with its rear end towards the median. Another EMS unit has now arrived on scene. Uh, so we'll try to get some more information. And we've got people on the other side of the highway now slowing down to take a look at this scene. And because the school bus is so big, it's obviously blocking the shoulder. And it looks like at least a couple of lanes. Right. And this looks like it just happened just a short time ago. Yeah, we're going to find out if any kiddos are involved or injured. So keep with us on air and online. All right. So again, 410 westbound in the McCullough San Pedro area. Any morning headlines, we are waiting to find out how much prison time, if any, the parents of the Mich Michigan school shooter will do. A pickup truck owner goes after a would-be thief, and it was all caught on camera. And we are, we are with a Texas man as he experiences his 
13th lucky number, Eclipse. David Sears is here. It's not you, David Sears. No. <laughs> no. Wow. I've only got 12. No. Oh, <laughs> darn. No, but we got some great stories coming out of yeah. yesterday in the Eclipse. So we'll get to that in just a second. We're going to start with first, this first. It's a first for the justice system. We are waiting on sentencing of the parents of that school shooter in Michigan. It is underway. Jennifer and James Crumbly are waiting to find out if they will be spending time in prison, and if so, how long. The prosecution is asking for 15 years each. The parents of Ethan Crumley were found guilty of involuntary manslaughter, being held criminally responsible for their son's actions after he killed four students at a high school back in 2021. Jennifer and James were found guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter. The prosecutor showed that the parents did not do anything in the way of helping Ethan when it came to his declining mental health, and they did not secure the gun he used. James Crumley is asking for time served. Jennifer looking for house arrest and living in her lawyer's guest house. We can put people on the moon. We can build skyscrapers. Huge monuments like the Hoover Dam. And we can't keep our skills, our kids safe in schools. Still waiting on that sentencing, prosecutors believe the shooting could have been prevented if the parents would have taken action. All right, so this is Eric Smith. He's going after a guy who was trying to break in and steal his truck right out of his driveway. He caught all his on the security cameras, but things got really wild. While Smith was pounded on that would-be thief, the guy driving the red car tried to run him over. Here he comes, he knocks Smith up on the hood and then slams him right into that truck. Smith says he wasn't hurt, and this is usually a quiet neighborhood outside of Seattle, but. Not on this night. He got a notification. His truck door was open, so he went outside and tried to hold on to that guy who was trying to steal his truck until he got run down. As I was on the hood, I was like, okay, where am I headed? So I looked back over my shoulder, and I was like, oh, no, not my truck. Um, and, and, again, this all happened within a split second. Yeah, last check, still no arrest, Smith says. They were teenagers. A couple of days ago, we told you about this man as Laverne Beiser. Before yesterday, he had witnessed the eclipse 12 times. He's just a few days shy of his 106th birthday, so that's as rare as the celestial phenomenon itself. So Laverne, along with his family, right there in his driveway yesterday in Irving when the place went dark. It's almost total, but a little bit of a crescent there. Like you see how dark it is. Look how dark it is, y'all. So, oh, look at there it is. There's, there's the, there's the, the, the wow. Oh, it turned out uh, almost perfect, uh, as good as any of I've, I've ever seen. I like that. Almost 106. He finally saw the one that was almost perfect, better than any previous 12 eclipses. So that, that, that's a good run. I would, I would have to say, but he's traveled all over to see these eclipses. He didn't, he didn't stay in one spot. He went to them and drug his family with them. Yeah. So they all experienced it. So it was awesome. great stuff. Some great memories. Yeah. And, and we had fun watching you guys yesterday. Great job. Yeah. Well, thank you. It was, it was a good day. Justin, Adam Caskey out there having fun. The rest of the weather team all over town. So it was yep. good stuff. Uh, thank you, David. Right. Thank you, David. We want to go back to Transguide, folks. And right now we want to zoom in. Uh, Transguide, thank you very much for zooming in oh, on a school is. bus accident. Uh, westbound 410, right in front of the J.C. Penney's there at North Star Mall. That's right. So we did see that there on the EMS page. There are several fire trucks, ambulance, police responders on scene. Whether anyone is actually hurt, we do see some people outside of that school bus. We have a crew on the way to check this scene out. We have not heard anything on our scanners. If any children were actually on the bus, of course, that is not confirmed at this time. Um, but we are still waiting and gathering that information if any students are actually on that bus or not. All right, so again, right in front of North Star, and this happened uh, just about 10 minutes or so ago. And we've also got a first responder on the other side of the divider. So people are slowing down, not only for that res first responder, which is what we're supposed to do, but then the big scene on the other side. Doesn't take long for it to stack up, and it's really starting to stack up. And There's there, thank you view. very much for the other viewpoint, uh, westbound. Uh, 410 right there at the 281 interchange and everything has just slowed to a crawl in that area, especially on that big flyover ramp there. Right. So just stay with us on air online as we get more developments. Again, we're sending a photojournalist out to the scene to gather information to see if anyone was hurt or exactly what led up to this crash. And we will keep you guys updated.
All right, 932 right now, and we have got major traffic issues in several parts of the city as we saw that uh, some of those storms roll through our area. Biggest thing that we're seeing right now is Loop 410 westbound right here in McCullough. This is uh, right there, right by North Star Mall. We had a uh, crash that you can see right here involved a school bus. Now we are reaching out to a couple of local school districts in this area, northeast, uh, north side ISD, to try and figure out exactly uh, where this bus belongs to and maybe if there were any injuries involved. Again, we don't have any information on injuries don't have any details right now on what exactly happened out here, but you do see that this bus obviously involved in this crash and it has brought traffic to an absolute standstill right here at an absolute parking lot here at Loop 410 westbound lanes at McCullough. Earlier they were reporting that there were three main lanes blocked here, but now it looks like there is just not any traffic going through this area as we see several emergency officials out here on the scene. Again, we are trying to confirm uh, where this bus belongs to. Uh, maybe it might be a potential school district, so we are reaching out right now and we will give you more information on that in just a little bit as we get it. Uh, as look here at our maps, you do see that they have multiple main lanes blocked here. Traffic backed up all the way to West Avenue, all the way to Vance Jackson Road. This is going to be a major mess around the San Antonio Airport and North Star Mall. This is not the only big incident that we're dealing with right now. 1604 eastbound to north right here headed towards the UTSA area. That has been completely shut down because of a crash that we saw earlier when we started at 9 o'clock. Uh, newscast here, 1604 eastbound past Bandera shut down. Traffic backed up all the way to Culebra Road right now for all of our drivers headed on 1604 east. So we have this incident here, 410 westbound and McCullough involving that school bus. Again, trying to get more information as we move along. And here's our crash here at 1604 Bandera. Traffic being diverted off to Hausman and uh, Kyle Seal Parkway. We were, I was told by TransGuide was that this may have involved some sort of construction vehicle, a hauler that was maybe carrying some dirt and maybe uh, just kind of lost control on the highway. Way there. So this could take a little while before we see things cleared out in that area right there. All right, guys, we're going to continue to get more information on this, but right now I'm going to send it back to Mark and Sarah. Guys. RJ, thank you. And you see that rain out there that's causing a lot of those incidents on our roads. And Justin, this is kind of just an appetizer of what we can expect maybe overnight tonight when we get heavier, possibly some more scattered showers. Correct. So we're going to get two rounds and this morning's kind of the first round. Uh, not a lot of rain, but as you saw, just enough to make roads really slick out there. We're still seeing some lightning strikes well to our north up there around Burnett and the Austin area. Uh, not a lot of rain around San Antonio at the moment, but let me zoom in a little bit closer and uh, you can see that we do have some activity there on the northwest side of Bear County, west of Leon Springs, a couple cells there, none of which are carrying any lightning with them. Uh, this is mainly just some pockets of moderate to uh, heavy rain at times. And then there's another little uh, area of rain moving towards Leon Valley. Uh, I, th I think we'll continue to see a few more showers as the morning wears on. And then by, say, lunchtime, uh, this activity will start to lift off to the north and northeast, and we'll get a break before that chance of storms arrives again tonight. So what you'll see here is a, a decent chance of rain this morning. As we get towards noon, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, rain chances fall off, and then we'll start to build them back up as we get into tonight. I'd say around midnight to maybe 2 a.m. is when rain and storm chances peak. Uh, and yes, we could see some severe weather later tonight. We're going to talk all about it, what you can expect, what the greatest threat may be, and when it clears out, coming up in just a couple minutes. See you in a few. Thank you very much, Justin. Well, a Southside Festival is raising money that is critical to supporting education programs and breaking generational cycles. And it's taking place this weekend. Tiffany Huerta shows us how a Southside Charter High School is making a lasting impact on its students. I didn't necessarily want to be in school at the time. Like, I was 17, half a credit. Uh, I had the tattoos. I was already incarcerated. My dad was incarcerated, uh, I think believed in his time you know, in high school. My grandpa was incarcerated. But it was a teacher at Por Vida Academy, a charter high school, that helped turn Enrique Salinas' life around. And it all started with a class assignment. I do the handout, I gave back to him, and then he gives me another one. And I'm like, okay, there's, I'm looking around, there's no one doing any work, so I'm like, so I just... And I give him again, and then he gives me a third assignment. I'm like, what the hell? Like, there's no one doing anything. Why are you like? So I do the third one, and I go like, here, you know, like, <laughs> leave me alone, you know. And then uh, he's like, hey man, can I talk to you? And I was like, yeah. And I went over there. He's like, what? Hey, what's going on? Like, what's your name? Like, why? Why are you here? And then that's the start of the relationship. 
After graduating from the academy in 2013, Salinas earned two associates of liberal arts and psychology from St. Philip's College. He then earned his bachelor and master of social work degree from Texas State University. And he is currently a doctoral student at the University of Texas at Austin's Steve Hicks School of Social Work. There's still students like me that come to these doors. There's non-traditional students. Students from all over Bear County and surrounding communities can come to this school. We've had kids come from Bernie ISD, North Side, South Side, um, and they all kind of just filter in, primarily due to behavioral issues, things like that, homelessness, all sorts of reasons to label them at risk. But when you get to know them and talk to them on a social emotional level, you really realize that they have more to their story and we really take the time to kind of get to know them. Salinas is getting ready to give back and participating in this year's Taste of the Southside Festival, taking place on campus April 13th and 14th. There will be entertainment, food, art, and all the money raised goes back to support the school programs. Salinas welcomes the community to the event and has a message for students going through a challenging time in their lives. These hard times do shape you and they're, you know, kind of unfortunate, but this is where character is built, this is where your drive is built, so no matter what you're, where you're at, where you're facing, just continue. Um, there's going to be better days. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. It's an exciting time. The KSAT Spring Internship Program is coming to an end, and this morning we wanted to introduce you to our interns. I love, I love these segments. So joining us this morning, is Ezekiel Ramirez and Andrea Moreno. Good morning, guys. Good morning, how are y'all? How are you Doing guys? Great. Very good, thank you. You guys have been busy, so busy that we've hardly seen you guys have been in and out of the newsroom like crazy this semester. All right, so first of all, first things are first. Let's talk a little bit about yourselves. What school do you go to, when do you graduate, and what do you hope to do after you graduate? So I'm a senior at Texas State University. I'm on my last semester, so I'm supposed to graduate in May. After I'm finished graduating, I'm going to pursue a career in broadcast journalism and hope to become a news reporter one day. So you, want, you want my job? I want your job. Okay. I, I, I okay. Want, I, I, <laughs> okay. Uh, Good luck. <laughs> well, I'm also a student at Texas State University. I'm also in my last semester. I graduate in May, um, majoring in electronic media. So uh, my plan is to do, be a web journalist. So that's my goal. Okay, so you're safe. Yeah. Okay. Well, I started as a web journalist. Did you really? Oh. Yes. Okay. You never awesome. know where it's going to lead you. Yeah. Okay. So be honest. Okay. You can be honest. Really? What has it been like interning with us? I know I actually went out in the field with you. <laughs> yes. I was a kind of a wild morning. I apologize. Okay. We were at the no. Cowboy <laughs> Rest no. Breakfast. Oh, that was a lot. It was a lot. It was yeah. like your first day. You were yeah. like just out there it's with us. Smell like and chorizo yeah. and everything. You know how it goes? <laughs> no, it, it's been phenomenal being here at KSA. I, it's been a dream since I was a child to end up here at KSA. And so to become an intern for the semester and be alongside real reporters, real producers, and be on the field and have y'all as my mentors, it's, it's been life changing. Did you? learn something? Absolutely. Okay, what did you learn when you when I, I was out with you? <laughs> putting you on the spot. <laughs> I learned different, like how to adapt to different situations, how you have to be ready for anything, how to connect with people and talk to the right people and get the right interviews and be able to think on your feet. It's a lot of little tips that a lot of people, normal people wouldn't be able to like be able to see, but for me, wanting to be a reporter, I pay attention to every little detail. And so any little thing that any of the reporters were doing, I was able to keep up with that kind that's of stuff. Oh, awesome. you're going to be just yeah, fine. Yeah, you're be fine. <laughs> you got it, this. It, it is a detail oriented job, that's yeah. for sure. What about you, Andrea? Uh, well, for sure, I've learned to have more confidence in my writing, for sure. Uh, I got all my experience whenever I was in college at San Antonio College. I worked for the Ranger there newspapers. So um, I'm very thankful that I got to in depth my journey. Uh, all my learning there here at KSAT. So I also got to work along with producers. So I also got to change my route of learning broadcasting, uh, writing. So that was really hard transitioning, but I really love doing both producing and uh, for the web, right? Outstanding, now. and Sac's a, a great place to start. I, Trust me on that. I know you produced alongside our 9 a.m. producer, Alex. How was she? Was she okay? <laughs> she was excellent. <laughs> I've learned a lot from her. Uh, she gives me the 9 uh, to 9 
uh, to, uh, to write those segments and I got to learn all of those teases and all that good stuff. Good. She's great. We, we love She's you, Alex. <laughs> we love you, Alex. Don't worry about it. Well, that. you guys are still smiling, so it's been a great experience and we're very happy. This is what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 We love our interns. You guys help us out so much. Like, they, we consider them actual, you know, real right. reporters and yes. journalists out in the field with us. And I'm actually getting coffee for you guys after this. So it's a reverse internship program. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Uh, congratulations. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank of you. Of course, of course. Right now, 942, 73 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Okay, we're going to take a look outside with Transguide again. RJ Marquez has had a very busy morning. We're revisiting that incident at Loop 410 in McCullough involving a school bus, and I know it's down to one lane is open. These are the westbound lanes right in front of North Star Mall. We haven't gotten it confirmed if students were actually on that bus, if there's any injuries. We do have a photojournalist on the way, and RJ is talking with Transguide throughout the morning on this incident. So as soon as we learn more information, we'll let you know. All right, back to Transguide, and we're keeping an eye on a couple of different incidents. So uh, RJ was just telling us, he's on the phone right now. This is that school bus incident, westbound 410 at McCullough. And we've got another school bus out there right now with its hazard lights on. So we don't know if that school bus is headed to that scene to offload some passengers, but we're keeping a very close eye on this. And we do have a uh, report, uh, uh, rather a photographer on the way to that area. But look at the big backups in that area, just crawling right. along there. At the in the westbound lanes of 410. We also saw some congestion on the other side too. Everyone's kind of slowing down, mm -hmm. uh, I guess just you know as a precaution. Again, we don't know for sure if students were on that bus or if anyone was injured or not, but we do see that bus making its way right now. Yeah, so it, potentially there could be some students that were being transferred. If we find out any information, if anyone was hurt or what exactly caused this crash, we're gonna keep you posted. You see yeah, it actually bus, making its way into the shoulder. Right. Okay, and the other one we wanna show you, big deal folks, is a 1604 uh, eastbound is now entirely closed just past Bandera Road to to a major accident. Everybody's having to get off there at Hausman. So expect big backups in that area. It is such a big backup. It's from basically Bandera Road all the way now past Culebra Road over on the northwest side. So uh, the roads are drying out, right. but the situation remains and a lot of traffic on the frontage road. RJ well. said this incident could be involving a truck that might need some major cleanup. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it caused the whole highway to be shut down there. But he's on the phone right now and hopefully we'll get some more information in just a bit. Justin? Yeah, the, the rain definitely causes some issues on the roads. That is uh, that is very clear this morning. And a lot of the rain is starting to let up now. As, as you guys mentioned, the roads are starting to dry some. Uh, we still have a few leftover showers, especially on the northwest side of Bear County. Uh, there around Bernie, but these are starting to dissipate some. We didn't really have any big thunderstorms, so to speak, uh, this morning. It was mainly just some pockets of moderate to heavy rain, and it moved along pretty quickly, uh, but not before causing some problems there on the roads. Now, as you go north, uh, there are some big storms up around Lano. Uh, Burnett seeing a huge storm now moving in with some uh, a lot of lightning there. That's going to move off to the north and east towards uh, I-35 towards Waco area. But uh, here around Bear County, I think we're going to get a chance to kind of dry out uh, a little bit later this morning and uh, get a, a bit of a break before we do get some more storm chances uh, later this evening and tonight. So let's go over to the live cam as we look out over the airport. And you can see visibility has improved, so we know the rain's moving out. And we had some drizzle earlier. That's kind of pushing out as well. We may start to get some breaks in these clouds. 73 at the airport, 74 New Braunfels, 70 in Bernie, 71 in Kerrville. We've got a south-southeasterly wind right now, which is pushing these numbers uh, to very high territory. Uh, very, very humid, at least for the moment. So we talked about severe weather. Not so much this morning, but tonight. This is after sunset, so we're talking midnight here in San Antonio when we could see another round of storms along the cold front. Here's what I think is the main threat. It's going to be hail uh, with these storms and then winds could be pretty gusty with some of the stronger storms as well. The flooding and tornado threat relatively low. This is going to move through pretty quickly. Here's the severe weather threat today. It's not just us, a large portion of Texas dealing with this threat. San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Tyler, Houston, this orange color is where the threat is at its highest, but we're in the yellow sector here on a scale of one to five, about a two. 
So there is a threat there for some stronger storms for our entire area as this area of low pressure moves through. So let me walk you through the forecast here as this low uh, begins to advance uh, towards us. Uh, we're going to see the front come in our direction too. Now, one thing I do want to point out is there is a bit of a dry line that sets up today. Typically, we don't get a ton of storms along the dry line, but we could see one or two pop up. I mean, the atmosphere is, is, is ripe for some storms, so I do want to keep an eye on that. This model does not develop anything along that boundary. This is at 7 o'clock showing that we've cleared out and it's quiet until we get the front starting to move in. That happens around midnight and it's right along this boundary. Well, we'll start to see storms just quickly erupt right along I-35 here in San Antonio and then quickly push east. So our window is pretty small, but I think those storms that initially develop certainly could be strong. This is 3 a.m. Those storms move into our eastern counties and by sunrise tomorrow, all the storms are out of here and we clear out on Wednesday. The only factor that we have to worry about tomorrow is going to be the gusty winds. We could see winds out of the northwest, 25, 35 miles per hour, some gusts to 40. So it will be a windy day on your Wednesday. And then we get some pretty quiet weather thereafter. Uh, so yes, we'll be watching those storms closely tonight. Once we get some clearing today, we're expecting temperatures to jump up into the upper 80s. It's going to be warm, cooler tomorrow though, 75 and then 80s as we head into the weekend. Justin, thank you. Let's take a look outside again at TransGuide. I'm going to take a quick, uh, closer look here. Yeah, we can, you can see this is a school bus crash that we've been talking about all morning long. And now this on 410 and McCullough blocking three lanes on the westbound lanes. And now we have that second school bus that indeed did show up possibly maybe taking some students that were involved in this crash. Oh, RJ has his hand raised. He's going to actually tell us he has got updated information after the break when we come back. All right, guys, welcome back. So we're going to give you a quick update on this traffic situation out there by North Star Mall. Lou 410 uh, westbound traffic there at McCullough. Uh, we have a school bus that was involved in a crash, so we can confirm that there were students. Now, fortunately, no injuries were involved here. Apparently, this bus hydroplaned on 410. This was a single vehicle crash. And again, we are still trying to confirm exactly where these students belong to, uh, but we know for sure it is not Northeast ISD, not Northside ISD. So we have the very latest information on KSAT.com on this one. And real quick if we could go to that bandera shot we got this one here major closure here 1604 right there past bandera for all of our drivers headed east to north to the utsa area guys justin <laughs> yeah uh, well we do now have a new tornado watch that is in effect for our northeastern counties so this basically includes new Braunfels, san marcus up to blanco and austin this is going to go until 5 p.m tonight that's one corridor we're watching I think San Antonio is going to get a little bit of a little bit of a break until we get into tonight with some more storms potentially overnight and uh, keep that KSAT weather app handy. We'll keep you updated throughout the day. Wow, lots going on. Lots going Busy. on. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And thank you, RJ. Hey, stay with us. We'll have updates on this story coming up on air at noon and also online.